Well, good morning to today's episode of Random Thoughts. I am glad you are with us today. Let me think. What time of year is this? Now, on a technically calendrical definition, it is not Christmas. It's Advent. But I don't want to be run out, run out of town on a stick, so it's Merry Christmas. It is this coming Sunday, by the way, will be what we call the third Sunday in the season of Advent, the season of preparation. We know that. It is also the time period, and when you are here at Faith, you will see our sanctuary, our courtyard, our front door area entrance is all bedecked with Christmas decorations. We are going to be putting some additional Christmas decorations out. I uh, haven't put it out because we've been dealing with some construction and we didn't want to cover everything with construction dust, if you know what I mean. But things are moving forward to where we can be able to put some more d additional decorations out. We'll get all that. I mean, that, that's not the point of today's video anyway. What is the point of today's video is we are in a, a new season, a new year, a new time period. No, calendrically speaking, I know I created a new word. We are not in a new year yet. That's coming up in three weeks. But we are in a new year, a new cycle, a new opportunity. Everything's new and inspiring and instructive and wonderful. And here we are. And here we are. We're going to be inspired, instructed, encouraged, engaged, all those other wonderful verbs that we can. This is truly another one of those random thoughts where I'm going to throw a lot of stuff out there today and talk about some informational thing. But my goal is to take and give to you something very inspirational. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll see you in a bit. So, inspirational. What is inspirational? Well, give you a little bit of background about me if you don't already know. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. That means I am a diehard, die hard fan of both the Cleveland Indians, Guardians, I'm still getting used to the name change, and the Cleveland Browns. And it inspires me to see how well the Browns are doing, even with all the adversity that has been going on. If you follow football at all, the second game of the season, they're playing the dreaded Pittsburgh Steelers. Nick Chubb, our star running back, goes down has has to have two knee surgeries to repair the damage from what happened. He, he goes down. Then our starting quarterback goes down. And then our backup quarterback goes down. Now we've got a third backup quarterback back in there. Uh, this person goes down. That person goes down. Injuries on top of injuries. And they still have an 8-5 and five record. You know what that tells me? That tells me that, that there is inspiration. That tells me that they are inspired by leadership. They are inspired by a common goal. They are inspired to do whatever it takes in order to meet that goal, despite the adversities that they are coming down with. It's, it's crazy. Now, for all intents and purposes, the, the season should have been over. But they're in the thick of it. They possibly could go into the postseason, depending on where the rest of the season goes. So that leads me to think about inspiration. Inspiration. Now, people can inspire people. 
I'm a, I'm a fan of Kevin Stefanski, uh, Andrew Barry, uh, the owner of the team. They're all on the same wavelength, on the same page, trying to make this all crazy thing work so they continue to be a winning strategy, a winning culture. What about inspiration in the framework of the church? Inspiration for encouragements, inspiration for engagement, inspiration for equipping, inspiration for all of it, and then some, you know. Inspired. Well, we've got the greatest source of inspiration ever. Nobody can inspire the way God inspires. Nobody can inspire the way his word written down can inspire greater and wonderful life. No one can inspire more than the life of Jesus Christ himself. Both God and man, 100% God, 100% man, his life, his perfect obedience to the will of God throughout his entire life, his Dedication to the will of God, not my will, but your will be done for the sake of you and for the sake of me. Wow. Inspiration. It's inspiring, is it not? And then Jesus dies on the cross, takes away all of our sins, rises, gives us a brand new life, and then 40 days after that, preparing his apostles for the next phase, he teaches them. Now, I'm going to have to leave you. I'm going back to heaven. I will return, but right now I'm going back to heaven. I'm going to leave you somewhat. I'm going to leave you another helper. I'm going to leave you the Holy Spirit, and he will remind you of everything that I have taught you. And that's what the Holy Spirit did on that day of Pentecost, and that's what the Holy Spirit continues to do, to inspire believers, inspire life. So if that's the case, why are we struggling so much? Why are Christians so much struggling with life? Why do we let life kick us in the teeth sometimes? Part of the reason is that we're human beings. Human beings struggle. Human beings have problems. Human beings sin. And that's what we struggle with. And that's why there's a lot of people out there who don't think that God is real, that don't think well, God is inspirational, don't think that God is a loving and compassionate God because they're in the thick of troubles and whatever issues that are happening in their lives. There are consequences, there are challenges, but God is always there to lead you through those challenges, whatever those challenges may be. They may be life and death challenges, they may be financial challenges, they may be practical challenges, they may be goal of life challenges, but God will always lead you through those challenges when you let him. When you take away all your resolves, take away all your reservations, take away all your yeah buts, and let God lead you by the hand and inspire you to greater and greater heights. The ultimate height is living with him in heaven. That's the ultimate height. But for today... You know, we can go on and on and on. You know me, I do that. But for today, I want to talk about inspiration, being inspirational. And the greatest inspirational source that we have is God. Let down your walls. Let down your reservations. Let down your yeah buts. Let, don't let the day-to-day -day oopses affect you so that you stop listening to God. God will guide you. God will direct you. Have faith and trust in what he has done for you. Have any comments? 
you know the you know what I would like. Just comment, please. Let me know what you're thinking about this and inspirations. Hey, let me know who do you think is a good inspirational leader? Who do you think is a good inspirational leader? And maybe we'll engage in a conversation about that. All right, so we're done for today. Uh, love to encourage you to join us for study on Sunday morning, 9.15, pardon me, 9.15 a.m. Love to have you with us in worship. This will be the third Sunday of Advent, like I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we are looking forward to, and I'm going to give you a further advent, ad, advertisement, that's the word I was looking for, Christmas Eve day, 10.30, fourth Sunday in Advent celebration, Christmas day, Christmas Eve Evening is our 6.30 celebration of carols and candles. Please join us and come be a part and hear the inspiration of the wonderful grace of God. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.